Hello everyone and welcome. This is a video tutorial on how to use the popular free open source GIS software QGIS and the Flight Planner plugin to create a flight plan that can be used with the popular drone automation software Lychee. Um, QGIS um, presents a very good option because not only is it uh, free and open source, it's also a very powerful uh, GIS toolkit. Using a QGIS with Lychee is, can be a bit of a challenge, um, but I've developed a workflow and a software tool to help make that uh, process actually a very painless. So let's dive into it. Um, QGIS is already launched. Uh, I'm going to start by um, covering how the flight plan is actually created in QGIS first and then um, how to export, um, convert, and load that uh, flight plan into Lychee. So we're starting out with a brand new project in QGIS. Um, the first thing we're going to do is add a map layer. Um, you can see that uh, I'm, I'm using Google Maps and double clicking on the map layer adds it uh, to the layer browser. And from here we can just kind of zoom in on um, the point of interest. I'm going to pick I'm going to pick a spot here. This is South Manitou Island in Lake Michigan. And it has kind of an interesting uh, feature here, a farm field that's irregularly shaped, um, which will make it a little bit more interesting um, to uh, build a flight plan for. We can imagine that we're doing, for example, a hypothetical uh, crop monitoring uh, survey mission. So um, once we've uh, found the area that um, we want to fly, we are going to create a new layer to represent the area of interest. And the way we do that is by going up to our Layers menu. We'll select the Create a New Layer submenu and a New Shapefile uh, layer under that submenu. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is give the file a name. I'm going to save this right on the desktop of the system. And um, we're just going to call it um, FP2LM, that's the name of the tool we're going to be using later on, Flight Plan 2 Lychee Mission Demo Area of Interest. And save that. For the geometry type, we're going to select Polygon. And for the coordinate reference system, we have to make sure we use a uh, coordinate reference system that measures distances in meters because that's what the Flight Planner plugin will expect. So we'll select EPSG3857. Uh, and from here, we just hit OK. You can see that this layer is now created in our layer browser. It is now the active layer. We'll start by making the layer editable by clicking this pencil icon, uh, select the uh, polygon tool, and then uh, very simply just scribe out the area that um, we want to photograph. We do not need to be necessarily too precise here because there will be a lot of overlap um, when the, the flight plan is created. Okay, so now the uh, area of interest has been defined and now we just need to use that to create a flight plan. So uh, QGIS um, has a plugin called Flight Planner. To install plugins in QGIS you just go to the plugin menu and um, go to the uh, the plugin manager and search for the name of the flight uh, the uh, plugin that you want to install flight planner just hit install and the uh, process is fully automated so we will select the flight planner um, plugin and plan flight now uh, the first step is to select the camera uh, that you want to use if the camera is not available in the menu here, then uh, you're going to need to add it yourself. You will need to get uh, the uh, parameters, the focal length, the pixel size, image height, and so on, these parameters um, from the uh, specifications for your particular camera. 
input these values and just hit save and then uh, that camera will be added to this menu for future use. Conveniently the DJI uh, Zenmuse uh, camera is included so we're just going to select that. Uh, for DTM we'll select our map layer which is Google Maps and for area of interest we'll select the area of interest layer that we just created. Um, one thing we will need to pay attention to is the altitude above uh, ground level. Um, since we are operating an unmanned aerial system, um, we want to make sure that we are within uh, altitude limits uh, for this particular geographic location. We're going to want to lower this um, a bit, and that is done indirectly um, by setting the, the GSD in centimeters per pixel. So you can see that by changing this value, that is basically how we change the um, altitude above uh, ground level at which, at which we're going to fly. Um, we'll make that uh, 119 meters AGL. Okay, and then with those parameters uh, set, just hit run. You can close this dialog, and you can see that the flight plan has been generated. Um, let me just walk you through what has been created here. So the, f the uh, flight plan or flight design, as it's termed, is a group of layers. It's added over here on the left-hand side in the layer menu. And the, uh, the first layer are the photos. So th these are the actual outlines of the individual um, photographs that will be taken. And you can see the um, amount of overlap um, between them. The next layer are the waypoints, these purple dots. And uh, these waypoints are course correction uh, waypoints. These are not involved at all in, in triggering the uh, camera. The third layer is the actual flight path, the line that the aircraft is going to fly over the ground. And it will connect the uh, waypoints from the previous layer. And then the last layer is one that's going to be um, particularly important uh, later on. And this is, these are called the projection centers. And what the projection centers are, are the centers of the photograph. So if I turn the photograph layer back on, uh, you can see that each of these red dots is uh, directly at the center of the underlying uh, photograph. So we will be using these projection centers as part of the workflow with uh, this flight plan created, we're almost, we're almost ready. Um, one thing that we need to do is uh, change, the, um, change the coordinate system that is uh, being used from this, uh, this particular uh, flight plan to something that can be used by uh, Lychee. So Lychee expects its uh, waypoints, for example, uh, to be in decimal uh, latitude and longitude uh, coordinates. And so we need to make sure that um, these waypoints are, are converted to that format. Um, so the first thing that we are going to need to do is change our coordinate reference system for the project. Um, if necessary, right now it's set to EPSG 3857. So we bring up that menu and we're going to want to change that to EPSG 4326, so select that. And then we are going to select the waypoints layer. So this is from the flight plan, just the waypoints layer. And to add the new geographic coordinates that Lychee will need uh, to these waypoints, um, we are going to go to the vector menu and down to the Geometry Tools submenu, and then the Add Geometry Attributes. So we will select the, uh, make sure the waypoint layer is selected, and it is. We are going to calculate the new coordinate reference, uh, that, or the new uh, geometry using the project coordinate reference system rather than the layer, and that's it. We just run that you can close this dialog box. You notice that a new layer has been added here. And if we open up the attributes for this layer, we can see that it's added. I'm sorry, I didn't show you the, what the waypoint layer looked like before we did this conversion. But um, basically what that the step that we just performed does is it adds this uh, X and Y uh, coordinate 
column. And you can see that those are in uh, properly formatted latitude and longitude coordinates um, for this location. Okay, so we're almost there. Now we can take this, this layer, new layer that we just created, and export it. So we right click, go to the export menu, save feature set as. We're going to select comma separated value and um, we'll give it a new name. We'll call it um, um, flight planner mission.csv and we'll save it right on the desktop along with everything else. Nothing else needs to be modified. Just hit OK. So now we can see that this uh, flight planner uh, mission has been exported. Um, you can just open it up in a standard spreadsheet. Okay. Now the last piece of information that we are going to need is the distance between these projection centers. Uh, basically, there is a limitation in the current version of Lychee um, whereby you can only have 99 waypoints. And so if you're flying a, a large mission that has um, a lot of photographs, you are not going to be able to use the waypoints to actually trigger the photograph events. You have to reserve all the waypoints that you have for navigation. And so the way we get around that is by manually entering the distance between photographs into Lychee. And this will become um, clearer once, once I, you actually see me do it. But for now, the important thing to do is measure the distance between these uh, projection centers. So we'll just go up here uh, to this measure tool and um, measure linear distance. Meters is fine. And we will just um, measure the distance between these two projection centers. And it's about uh, 23.4 um, meters. So we just keep that number in mind. Now, this file that we just created um, cannot be loaded into the Lychee um, mission editor as it is. Um, if we try, for example, to import this file, this flight planner mission, upload it, import it, it's going to, it's going to give us an error. And that's because the format is not compatible. Now, if you want, you can actually open this file up in a spreadsheet and you can make all the changes to it that are required by hand um, to make it compatible with uh, the Lychee Mission um, file format. 